Hello everyone, and welcome back to another EU4 guide. I'm Lord Formand, and this time we're going to be covering Ethiopia, both the Coptic and Jewish Ethiopia, with a side mention of um, Sunni. So, Ethiopia is one of the powerhouses of the Horn of Africa region, if not the powerhouse. They are the only really significant Coptic nation. There are a couple other Coptic nations, but um, Ethiopia is the strongest in the game. Um, they are Christian, which is pretty interesting in a world of Sunni and fetishists. And um, alliances, if you stay Coptic, are going to be tough. So let's talk the strengths of Ethiopia in general, and then we'll go into some general strategy. So Ethiopia has reduced land attrition and monthly autonomy change. These are both very important for Ethiopia. Uh, the attrition is going to help you keep soldiers alive in a pretty harsh, arid climate that you get. A lot of mountains, a lot of deserts types area. And the autonomy change is actually very important now because Ethiopia has a unique, very annoying um, iterant capital. Um, I'll go into that a bit if I remember. And basically this just helps to counteract that. Um, in the long run, it allows you to make your provinces less autonomous, more productive, quicker. They also get a prestige, which is nice, legitimacy and new air. Between these two and this one up here, your land should always pretty much be stable. Um, you should have high legitimacy. You should have constant above zero prestige without any effort. Uh, then you get probably one of the stronger ones for Ethiopia, Fort Defense plus 20 and Monthly War Exhaustion lower. This allows Ethiopia probably to fight defensive battles like, well, I honestly, I'd say like no one else in the game. The only one that's close is Russia, and I think Ethiopia is probably better at it. Um, basically, your forts are really hard to take, and your country doesn't give up as fast as you lose land towards the enemy. Then you get a nice little Diplo rep, doesn't help much. Free missionary, court creation cost negative 10, which is always nice. And then army tradition plus 0.5 with a cap of 5 discipline, which makes the Ethiopia tree not amazing at conquest, not amazing at war, not amazing at trade, but pretty good at stability and expansion. So what other strengths does Ethiopia have? Well, Ethiopia has a unique unit under regiment. It's called the Kawa. I'm probably saying that wrong. It costs five military points to raise. Um, it's very useful. Um, I used it for most of my recent um, Let's Play of a Jewish Ethiopia, which you guys should, should check out if you haven't seen it. Um, I do most of the stuff I'm going to talk about here in it. So basically, less land attrition stacks nicely with the Ethiopian bonus. Basically, your troops can wander around your land, take very few losses. Shock damage received, negative 15%. This, of course, is very strong at the earlier game. It falls off late game, but overall is solid throughout the entire game. Um, there's not many countries that have just generally reduced damage taken. Um, it's pretty powerful. Slower reinforce and reinforce cost is a pain. It means if you lose troops in a battle or you lose a battle, it will take you longer and more money to get them fighting again. Not that Ethiopia has any trouble with money if played correctly now. So those are some of the basic starting strengths of Ethiopia. They also start with a government reform here, the Nagusa Nagast monarchy. Um, and you can read about it, but basically you're an empire and you have the iterant capital and you can recruit Kawa. You have a nice unrest, reduction stability cost modifier, and your move cap capital cost modifier is cheaper. Um, I really don't particularly like this modifier. It's one of my least favorite ones I've seen in the game in quite a while. Um, it hasn't really, I don't think it fires till you're a couple days into the game, but basically it means that except for the region your capital's in, um, or the area your capital's in, everywhere else in your empire has increasing autonomy. Unless you're at peace. If you're at peace, it will go down. But as soon as you're at war, your lands will get more and more autonomous. Which, in the long run, if you stay at war for too long with that modifier, it can easily cripple you. Um, so that's something you want to get rid of as quickly as you can. And there is a way to do it through your mission tree, which we'll go into in a bit. But other stuff, you start out with probably one of the best monarchs in the game. Zara Yakob, who's pretty good. You start out with a very bad air. So my recommendation, get rid of it immediately. Yes, you get negative prestige, but you don't get stuck with a 1 2 1 if this guy dies. By the way, if this guy dies in the first 10 years, just restart. Um, 
I've had him live for like 40 years. It makes a huge difference in terms of your Ethiopia game. Um, because this guy will keep you at technological par uh, parity with Europe while he's alive. But as soon as he dies, you're going to start falling behind in tech. You're going to struggle with monarch points. You want to keep him as long as you can. Um, it has no unique decisions at this point in the game. Um, you can get some if you go Jewish and stuff. So let's talk about what to do as Coptic Ethiopia. So Coptic faith is quite an interesting one. You get Fort Defense, which stacks nicely with the Ethiopian's national idea. And you get Tolerance to True Faith, which is just meaning your provinces are more loyal if they're Coptic, which is nice. Um, it allows you to be a little bit more reckless without having all your lands revolt on you. But the cool thing about the cops is that uh, they get blessings. So there are certain holy sites, Alexandria, Axum, Antioch, Kwasar Ibram, which is right up here, and then Yervan, which is way up here. And these are important because as soon as you get one that is both controlled by a Coptic nation and is Coptic, so the one right here, Kwasa Ibram, actually starts Sunni, even though the state religion is Coptic. They have a chance of converting it, but it doesn't happen a lot. And if you want to read about it, it kind of gives you a little bit of history here. But Axum allows you to pick one from the start. So you get choice between legitimacy, manpower recovery, missionary strength, core creation cost reduction, or discipline. Now, in my experience, the biggest crippling problem for Ethiopia for most of the game is they have low manpower. So that means I tend to take Encourage Warriors of the Faith for the manpower recovery. Other people will say core creation cost is better. And I agree, it will save you tons of Monarch points in the long run and it is very valuable. But I tend to like the manpower recovery just so that I can wage more wars early on. Discipline is nice later on. I tend to take it after I get Alexandria because that's at which point I'm usually fighting the Ottomans. Legitimacy should probably be taken last. Missionary strength is nice, but if you are um, Coptic or, well, if you're Coptic, there's all other modifiers that get you more conversion strength. But if you take religious ideas, which I recommend you do, you don't need this one until late, 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 late game. In fact, I almost might take legitimacy before it. Um, so my, I recommend you take Warriors of the Faith. If you're confident about your expansion, take Territorial Rights. Um, and if you just want Discipline, Will of the Martyrs helps. So that is the Coptic Faith. And um, basically the goal, in fact, several missions are to control the Coptic Faith sites. Um, that takes a while. So in terms of your starting situation as Ethiopia, right? Ethiopia is here. You have two subjects, one of which is Coptic. Um, they do have a nice gold mine. And the other is surprisingly Sunni, although they are loyal to you. I don't recommend getting rid of them rather quickly. I recommend keeping them around because they contribute six troops. And um, they will help with um, a lot of your wars over here. As long as you keep them loyal. In terms of who to ally, because there's very few allies you can get, um, my recommendation, recommendations are probably Elodia here. They're not that strong. They're never going to be a threat to you as Ethiopia, but they do contribute six troops. And the downside is you might get called into some of their wars. What I would not do is ally Medribari. Now, there is a chance that if you royal marriage them, they die, you get a personal union. However, with a new mission tree, there is a mission that actually involves controlling this land. And if you ally them, or make them a subject, or get a union, you're delayed in progressing down that mission tree. Uh, in my series I did, I actually made them a subject in the end. And it uh, wasn't necessarily the best decision. It delayed my expansion quite a while based off how the missions go. The other, the other reason you might not want to do it is if the Mamelukes for some reason want to go south, this is where they're going to expand first. Now, the unique one here is Makuria. If you can um, subject them, you know, turn them into a offer vassalization of vassal, I would honestly recommend you do it. Um, it's t tough to do until you've expanded up to them, but if you wait too long, I've seen the Mamelukes turn them into a subject plenty of times, and then to get another Coptic holy site, you have to fight the might of the Mamelukes. 
in case you haven't recognized, there's a bit of a pattern here. The Mamelukes are going to be your biggest threat for a long time. A doll here, which looks like a threat to you, isn't really. Um, Ethiopia can crush them and a couple of their allies with relative ease. In terms of expansion, this is right where you're going to want to expand to start. You actually have a mission that will help you with that right up here. Um, once you get General of One and Army Size of 100% of Force Limit, which you should do rather quickly, you'll get permanent claims in this area. Uh, and that will allow you to go here, so there's no point in fabricating a claim at the beginning. Um, in fact, you can, at the very start of the game, if you want, you can just go and raise Kawa to get you to that and complete that mission uh, once you get a General. There we go. Mission complete. It's that simple. Um, now I could wage war. However, in terms of what you want to take versus what you might want to vassal, I found that not vassalizing any of these is probably the way to go. These two here are just not worth it. This one down here, you actually probably want this gold mine. Um, there's very few gold mines in the area. There's two, in fact, until you get way down here. So you kind of want both of them. In terms of annexing subjects, you want to annex this one first so you get the gold. But uh, Kaffa makes a very good location for your capital. Uh, I can explain what I mean by that later on. But um, you want to take all this, basically. This would be the only one I would consider making a subject. But then the issue is they're fetishist, which means you're going to have to try and either deal with a subject that is not of your religion. Then when you annex them, you've got to convert it or you force religion, then they hate you. Uh, I just find it easier to take over. It's only 12 development. It'll increase your force limit. This right here, though, is the first thing you got to deal with. You'll notice this is one of the few countries in the world that starts with a revolt. Beta Israel separatists. Uh, basically, you do that. They'll probably stop. So I advise you actually wait a day or two till they get locked in the movement, then go in, crush them, take this. Once you're done with that, this is the point at which you have to choose between staying Coptic and Jewish. Kind of. Gideon's Revolt. Once you take over and wipe out the revolt, you have a choice to either convert these two provinces to Coptic, because right now they're the only two Jewish provinces in the world, um, or leave them to be Jewish. If you want to go the Jewish faith, what you actually need to do is let them stay Jewish, Start converting their lands with very low missionary strength, which will trigger religious rebels, and then let them occupy 50% of your country, and you can flip religion to Jewish, and then you can go Jewish. However, I don't recommend you try and flip religions till you've secured this area down here. The reason being, um, first off, flipping religions takes a while. It will weaken you internally. Taking this area here will prevent these guys from either getting conquered by Adal or making alliances outside of this area. I've seen this happen a couple times, alliances up there. Um, it becomes a pain. It's much easier to conquer them when they're weak and they're divided. So, my recommendations, as soon as you squash this revolt, march south, take over this land. Your starting force, even though you've got low manpower, is more than enough to win. In terms of your diplomatic setup, I put one on your own subject countries, and then if you ally somebody, do that. Um, or you could put one on your neighboring countries here, just to make them a little bit happier. They won't really care what you're doing, because they're mostly Sunni. These are Coptics or Fetishists. Um, so it's pretty easy to conquer them without any real aggressive expansion. After which, going after a doll is quite possible. Um, there's missions that will help you with that. But... They tend to have good allies early on, and if you're going to flip religions to Jewish, it's going to delay you even further. So I recommend you wait for an opportunity to strike. So let's talk some more missions, because this will guide the expansion. You'll see, you'll see what the kind of the goal of the game is to make you expand. So after you squash the revolt here, it wants you to secure religious unity. Obviously, this is slightly more difficult if you're going Jewish, um, but you can usually get a theologian or an inquisitor pretty easily. Convert it, you get unrest, tax modifier. It's nice money, doesn't matter. Then if you stay Coptic, um, and you get your clergy loyalty up, and you get the centralization reforms of Tsar Yaqob, which happens pretty early on, you can then get United Church, government reform progress, which is very important for Ethiopia. And you get a special privilege, biblical Sabbath reform, which I can show you guys later on. Um, it's 
half decent. It's nothing game breaking. Some extra conversion strength, if I remember. Um, so then the next route here is they want you to conquer the south, right? Which is conquer this area, which as I already said, you should probably do. You do that, you get development costs, missionary strength. It'll allow you to convert this area quite efficiently, make it uh, Coptic or Jewish, whichever you are. If you delay firing this and if you until you flip Jewish, it will help convert this area much faster. Um, you stack it with the modifier you get for converting religions and it's really, really fast. I don't necessarily recommend at any point as Ethiopia though, you raise autonomy. I know in a lot of my games, I raise autonomy on nations when I conquer them just to prevent revolts. Don't do it as Ethiopia because of your stupid government form, which makes it very hard to lower autonomy. Um, after which it wants you to make both of these a six production province because they're both the gold provinces. You want to do this pretty quickly, um, <laughs> mainly because uh, as soon as you do, you get an amazing privilege called controlled gold mining, which basically means your gold mines will very rarely deplete, very low uh, inflation, which means you can fund your entire empire from your gold mine. It's very easy to get 20 gold coming in from the Ethiopian gold mines when you're only having like five to six other income. It's insane. That's why I say Ethiopia doesn't have gold problems. You can do that as both the Jewish and the Coptic. Uh, next, you'll see that they want you to get access to the Red Sea over here. The easiest way to do that in some ways is to actually take Masawa if you're following the missions over here. The downside is if you do, you border the Mamluks and they might come after you. At which point it'll build a shipyard, which is nice, gets you faster ships. Wants you to create a navy. If you do, it will explore the Mediterranean for you, which can be quite nice if you're looking for allies to fight either the Mamluks or the Ottomans. You can do contact with Portugal. In my opinion, this event is extraordinarily hard for it to work right. It was much easier prior to the Origins DLC. Uh, if you get it, you can get a missionary company and some combat stuff to fight the Mamluks and etc. Although they can get a counter counteracting event that strengthens them. I've tried it four times. I've never gotten Portugal to agree to help me. Um, if you do, good for you. Put it in the comments so people know exactly what it does. Uh, and then this one's tricky. If you get trade power in, you know, Europe, um, you get some nice trade power. But the big key is once you start getting down here to the ideas of the West, no one's ahead of you, get a ton of monarch points, innovation, and then you can get to modernize the army, which is a very powerful event and is very useful once you can get to it. But the issue is you have to do this train the Kawa as well. So you have to have 30 Kawa regiments, which isn't hard. Really, Kawa should just replace infantry for you as Ethiopia, if you can obviously afford it. Um, the tricky part is to get the army professionalism and the army tradition of 30. Um, basically, if you're not at war, you should be drilling. The problem being, you usually have a lot of rebels, so drilling can be risky. It takes a while. Um, if you do that, you get a choice between two privileges, the Kawa Peacekeepers, which um, give increased drill strength, uh, rebel suppression, but more importantly, a negative 15% land modifier, um, which is very useful for supporting a larger army, because at some point, you're going to need a massive army to fight the Mamluks and the Ottomans. Um, and even though you've got gold mines upkeeping it, it's a bit tricky. The other option is the Kawa Conquerors. They give you discipline and army recovery, morale recovery. It's really which ones you want. I find the Conquerors not to be as useful as the ability to upkeep a larger army, but personal preference. Once you complete that, you get some more professionalism. Then this is where it gets even harder. You have to have a 80% army professionalism and army tradition of 75, which is in my opinion, kind of tricky to get up there unless you're constantly waging wars or you take an idea that gives you more, you know, army tradition. Um, we'll just keep moving this way. You get Qasir Ibram, take it, convert it, gets you claim on all of Egypt. So don't bother to invade Egypt till you take this province. It's not worth it. The free claims on all of Egypt is extraordinarily useful. Then it wants you to take Alexandria. Then it wants you to take Antioch. Interestingly enough, there's nothing about taking Jerusalem which is a little bit odd. Um, 
even if it's not a Coptic holy site, you'd think there'd be some mission for it. Regardless, um, it's still worth taking. Over here is what I was saying about the government, the really annoying Ethiopian iterant capital thing. This is how you get rid of it. You reach government reform six. There is this, um, where is it? Uh, this one up here gives you government reform progress. I can't remember if any of the others do. Um, suffice to say, you wanna try and uh, reform your government to tier six as soon as you can. Uh, and then you have to have biblical Sabbath reform if you stay Coptic. I believe that just goes away if you go Jewish, because I don't remember having to deal with that problem. There was no replacement. You have to have religious unity of 90, and you have to have stability of 3 and 9 income a month, which means you have to have a half-decent monarch, or you have to focus it and have a good advisor. It's not really that hard to get. Once you do, you get the Solomonic Empire government reform which gets rid of your annoying problem and it gives you a permanent capital. Okay, next tree. You've got deal with your subjects. Get opinions of them up. You can get a modifier to keep them happier or to annex them faster. As I said, I kind of like to leave them alone for a while and use them in the wars, but it's personal preference really. Gives you claims in this area, which is nice. So before you expand up here, get rid of your subjects basically, or get their opinion high. Then you've got Unify the Tribes, wants you to conquer this area. Once you do, you get a frontier here. You'll be in accepted culture. You get a permanent claim on this province here. Basically, it's just to help you expand up here. It's kind of nice. Then you get a mission to conquer this, which means big war against the Mamelukes. Please you government reform progress. In my opinion, though, you should probably have already reformed your government before you fight the Mamelukes. But if you haven't, this will help. Um, also, as you expand up here, if you're Coptic, you'll get a lot of modifiers that give you increased missionary strength in a, a state. So when taking land, try and take states rather than just individual provinces. It'll just help with the conversion. Over here, this is one of the cooler ones for Ethiopia. I'm honestly surprised this isn't a great project slash wonder. Basically, Aksum here, improve it five times. You get a cathedral, which is quite nice. You'll get a cathedral long before anyone else in the game gets one. Uh, development cost, but more importantly, yearly prestige, and it'll give you a core on this area, which is quite nice. Now, one way to steal these guys' lands, if you do ally them, is you can use the wonderful um, favor system to ask them to return a core province to you, and you can actually steal everything but their capital from them. So if you do want to go that way, you can get to the coast. Next one, take this, prove it five times, there's a bit of a theme here. If you do, you get an event, which will make this into a uh, center of trade. It's quite nice. And then it wants you to finally go this way. So what the game is telling you is not to expand east for some time. It's more to go south first, then to go north a little bit, and then go east. Really up to what you decide. I found going east earlier to be easier, and then I took these events. But if you really want to be efficient, you know, maximize your admin power with coring, make it faster, make it easier, less AE. Just go out of your way a little bit. Either ally or conquer these guys, improve these two provinces 10 times or five times each, then expand east. It's not hard. Once you do, also you have to take Egypt. You get this mission here, Unite the Horn, lowers autonomy, gives you more claims on the Yemen area. Then it wants you to expand into Arabia. Basically, just take over this area. It's not that hard. If you get a chance when you're fighting the war against, say, Yemen or somebody, or whoever controls this, try and take Mukha here. Um, just because controlling the crossing means you don't have to have a navy station there permanently. Oh, and as Ethiopia, just build like 10 heavy ships. You'll control this whole area for the whole game. Uh, unless the Europeans invade. Then, surpass the past. It wants you to own... Lots of land in Arabia. If you do, you get surpassing the Aksumite borders, Aksumite legacy. And then this will allow you to get up there to form Aksum. Um, Aksum is a very powerful nation. Um, I don't have it formed in my game, so I'll just tell you what the power is. The traditions, you get 5 discipline, 15 governing capacity modifier, both really strong. Yearly prestige, 
reduced aggressive expansion impact by 15%, negative 15% war score cost, which is really strong, plus two tolerance of the true faith, negative five tech cost, plus 10 institution spread, plus 15 trade efficiency, uh, yearly inflation reduction of 0.1, and then ambition national manpower modifier. So much better at Ethiopia than Ethiopia at waging wars. Then if you do all of this, and you're really stable, you control this whole area, you get a blessed empire. Stability, tolerance, manpower, and true faith provinces. This will solve your manpower problems as Ethiopia. It will just take you a long time to get there. Okay. Okay, I think that is mostly everything we need to do here with the starting Ethiopia. So I am going to cut here, and you'll see me with the, well, you'll see. So we get cuts. Okay, we're back here. So it's about a hundred and what twelve years later. So this is a Coptic Ethiopia game I was doing prior to this, and this was a good point to show you how things were going. So, um, to show you some of the stuff, um, let's see where is it? Biblical Sabbath reform. That was the reform I can show you. Like missionary strength, tolerance to true faith. Reform progress, very useful for reforming your government. However, it does give you national tax modifier negative 10. So I used it. So I reformed the government, then got rid of it. In terms of the Solomonic Empire government reform, national unrest, tolerance to true faith, maximum absolutism, which is always nice, and possible Kawa up 100%. It's pretty powerful. However, I didn't need to go all the way down here to tier 6, where I, I took I am the state, obviously. Um, and then I was able to reform it. So this is how much I've gotten done at this point in the game. You'll notice that there are some areas I haven't fully invaded, like the horn here. The Portugal is really tough to get, um, cause you have to get the diplo diplomacy, but everything else going in our favor, some galleys, some heavy ships, some light ships. I'm the dominant power in the region. I'm one of the great powers of the world. And obviously I've invaded in pretty much crushed the Mamelukes at this point. They can't really compete with me. In terms of ideas, this is a good time to talk about them. Defensive ideas is probably the first one you should take is Ethiopia. I know I push defensive ideas a lot in my videos. It's because it's so strong. It's even stronger on Ethiopia. If you remember, you've got the negative shock modifier, which makes your army strong early. If you take Defensive ideas, you get the morale of armies. Your armies are super powerful early game until fire really starts to matter over shock, which takes quite a while. Um, also, additional fort defense means your forts on mountains here, 100% fort defense. To be fair, I did build a rampart there. So let's look at this one, 70%. It's really powerful. Coptic, hostile borders, defensive mentality. Obviously, I've got power projection and it's in the highlands. This fort can tie up an enemy army for months until I rebuild and then a counterattack them and get the defensive terrain penalties on them. Also, attrition for enemies, not to be underestimated, especially in areas that are arid, because now you can get a lot more attrition. It's not going to win you a war, but it can bleed the enemies. If you watch my Jewish Ethiopia one, I held a fort here in Karga against a much superior force for a long time, and they lost a ton of troops to attrition and sieges. Still didn't win that war, but whatever. Then I took religious for the conversion, because even though you can convert, and with the um, Sunday Bible reform or whatever, you can convert reasonably efficiently. Also, I didn't mention it, but you start out with these rock-hewn churches. You start out with them, you get missionary strength, prestige, missionary maintenance cost, missionary strength, even more reduced missionary maintenance cost, and more prestige. It's quite easy as Ethiopia to have max prestige, really good missionaries, and cheap missionaries with religious ideas. I mean, you combine it, you're getting negative 60 missionary cost plus like plus four conversion or plus five conversion. Just take religious ideas. You'll thank me later. It's pretty solid. 
Um, also, Deus Volt here, the finisher for the religious ideas, very powerful in a world where you're the only Coptic, which I basically am at this point. I can just freely use that, reduce AE, reduce war score, win battles rather than have to take provinces. It'll allow me to sweep down here very quickly when I actually get to it. Then I chose offensive ideas. This was a bit of a weird one here. I don't know if I actually wanted to stick with it. The other one I might have picked is Ethiopia was quantity, just so I could compete against, say, the Ottoman armies. Although, uh, this game's going really well. I didn't need them against the Mamelukes, but if you do, take that. Otherwise, offensive ideas, really powerful. Let's see. Anything else I need to cover at this point for you guys? Uh, I don't think so. You can get some nice stuff like morale of armies here from Quesar Ibram's stuff. You stack all these. My armies easily crush the Mamelukes. Um, I do recommend, if you get a chance, you try and take this stupid island here. I really don't like this island in the game. It, I get it, strategic component. It's a pain to invade. Try and get it. Try and get it out of the way sooner than later. Because otherwise you may have a nation just sitting here that'll force a war. These guys, Mara tend to ally the Ottomans in my games a lot. So it becomes a pain to take a single island. I don't know why, it just does. Outside of it, I actually allied Tunis this game. The other ones that tend to be half-decent allies are Naples. If you can't ally the Ottomans, ally the Ottomans. If not, look abroad, Timurids aren't bad. Okay, let's jump to Jewish now. Okay, before I forget, if you've watched this far, thanks for watching this far. Most people stop after like 10 minutes. So this is my Jewish Ethiopia game from my uh, Let's Play. You'll notice we have a lot of cops here. That's because I was trying to flip back to Coptic after I done all got the Shemot is not achievement as the Jews, which is convert all Egypt to, to uh, Jewish, uh, to Judaism. Um, it's actually not possible when you're this large to flip back. So this is actually a good representation. Once you expand outside of this area, you're not going to easily be able to call, to religion flip. Just pointing that out. Um, at this point, my problem is more along the lines that as Jewish, you get a wonderful event that auto converts Christian and Muslim lands to Jewish for you. The downside is it actually functions about as fast or faster than rebels can take land, um, making it nigh on impossible to flip. Um, I'm like four episodes past where I ended my series and I still wasn't able to flip religion. So just ignore this. It was all Jewish before. It'll be all Jewish again. So let's look at Judaism. So flipping to Judaism, you want to have happen roughly after you've conquered the southern area, in my opinion, but before you really expand north or west, you get the lovely event, which auto converts. In some ways, you don't even need religious ideas as uh, if you go Jewish, because it will convert most of your Muslim and Christian lands. The downside is if you run across the fetishists, you actually have to convert them on your own. And there's a fair amount of fetishists in this area, which makes it a pain without religious ideas. So what are the benefits for going Jewish? Well, you get an additional advisor and you get additional tolerance of the true faith. But where Judaism, uh, Judaism really shines is in their kind of Protestant knockoff mechanics, which are better than Protestant, in my opinion, in some ways. So what you do as Ethiopia, just like Pro um, Protestantism, you get faith power per month based off your monarch points and your unity. But where it's unique is you have three aspects here, but within each one, you can't just pick and choose. You're limited to one of the three. So I can take the festival of Sukkot, I'm probably saying it wrong, reduces inflation by one, gives you 0.3 years of income, and reduces interest per annum. However, you could also pick the festival here, which gives you national unrest, and every time you hit celebrate festival, you get one stability. Pretty sure it will flip it into admin power if you're over your stability. All right, three already. And then down here, festival of Simchat, Gives you tech cost, gives you reform progress. So this is something that's very useful to take early on if you're trying to get rid of the initial iterant capital issue. Um, it's a solid one. 
Um, the reason I went with this is due to the controlled gold mining, which I'll talk about after this. Then you've got your diplomatic aspect. This is where it can get some really powerful stuff. Um, Jewish community. No Jewish province will suffer the penalties of non-accepted culture and same culture group as long as this is active. Basically, if a province is Jewish, you get full production, full taxes, full manpower from it. You don't have to try and embrace the culture. It's very useful, plus more tolerance to the true faith. It's always solid. Your other options, tolerance of heathens. Basically, religious unity, you'll be unified if you've got Christians and Muslims in your land, but you won't be able to convert them. So positives or negatives. If you're just expanding into Christian Muslim lands, by all means take this because the auto convert event will in fact still fire. And so eventually they will all become your um, religion. It's kind of cool. Then down here, home of the Jews. This one I stuck on for quite a while. It's very powerful. Development costs down, helps a lot with deving institutions as Ethiopia, which you should do. And I'll hopefully remember to talk about that. But Christian and Muslim countries get plus 35 opinions of you. This surprisingly means it's very easy for Ethiopia to vassalize Muslim nations. Something that almost never happens in the game, vassalizing outside of your culture group, you can do with relative ease as Ethiopia, Jewish Ethiopia, of course, and ally them. Um, I actually found it safer to be Jewish than be Coptic, actually, in this area. Um, obviously, and this is my side note about going Sunni, if you go Sunni, you play just like a normal Sunni nation. It's really easy to make allies, really easy to expand because you're mostly conquering Sunni lands. It's not really anything else special about Ethiopia if you go Sunni, but it's quite cool. Then the final aspect is your military. So I took the one that gives me reduced war exhaustion if you win a battle. And if you win a war, you get faith power. Nice for stacking festivals. It also gives you a boost to morale. Stack that with defensive ideas. You've got a lot of morale. You can also do land attrition here, which is while at war, you also get manpower recovery speed and faith power. This is good if you didn't take, well, you can't take it, but it's kind of the equivalent of the Coptic manpower recovery speed. And down here, you have fort defense. Sieges of our own fallen forts start with plus two siege progress in our favor. This allows you to lose forts and then retake them. This is if you're fighting a superior enemy, say Mamelukes, Ottomans, take it. Remember, we've got some already pretty good fort defense. If you're Coptic, if you go Jewish, it falls. That replaces it, basically, with a better form. And then over here, you have Celebrate Festival, depending on your admin one. Once you get 200 faith power, each of these costs 100 to put in, so fill them out before you start doing festivals. In this case, I get 600 gold, and I lose one inflation. You're not going to have money trouble with money as Jewish Ethiopia, not till you start building immense armies. Um, I'm second in the world in military rank. I have an insanely large army. It is almost entirely supported by gold and trade initially, and now it's moving more into production and taxation. But I'm getting 20 gold per month, barely any inflation change due to controlled gold mining. If you remember, that's the mission here, the riches of Kaffa. If you do, you get this lovely modifier. Merchant in guilds loyalty up 5, influence up 30, so be careful you don't get to 100. But monthly gold from inflation, negative 75. Gold depletion chance, negative 75. Downside, all power costs 5% more. Some people would say don't take it because it makes everything cost more. In my opinion, being able to just set it and forget about inflation and have tons of money from gold was worth it. Um, it's very powerful. It's very solid. It's just, it's great. I, it's really great. <laughs> um, you'll notice my capital here is in Kaffa. The reason is, this is the first gold province you will get that you can put your capital in. Yes, you could annex Damat at the beginning of the game here and move your capital to this province. I found I got Kaffa first, and so I just moved my capital there. And because my capital was in the area, the autonomy was automatically zero. The autonomy in this area spiked. But then I, if I maxed my gold production, combined with the privilege, I had a ton of money coming in from this province. Didn't have to worry about inflation. Didn't have to really worry about depletion. I think I had one depletion event in 200 and some odd years. 
Um, and if you go around and you do consolidate development or pillage people's capital, it'll get you even more development in this for a while. It's pretty good. It's also out of the way here. It's very easy to stick a fort here, fort here, and a fort over here or something. And uh, your capital's safe, which it isn't if you stay up here in Gondar. It's pretty vulnerable, actually. Overall, it's not a bad place for a capital. Uh, not that I would develop it develop there for institutions. Let's quickly talk about that. The best development provinces as Ethiopia are kind of hard to explain. So if you look at the terrain here, you have a lot of mountains, a lot of highlands, marsh. You've got steppes here, which is not great. And then highlands up here. And then you have desert. So hilariously, the best provinces are here. These are dryland provinces that have a 5% dev cost. Not bad, but you also got to remember you have arid here for another 10. So 15%. Now, if you go Jewish uh, and you take the, where is it? This aspect, 10%, that helps. And then if you always remember to do this, if you put on the state, encourage development, you'll actually have a 5% cheaper rather than having a struggle with plus 35, plus five, much more manageable. Um, it's actually not really that. See, this is 35. This is actually when you combine the 215. So it's 20% better regardless. So I tend to develop these two provinces. You could also develop Axum up here um, because you get the obelisk here for 10% off. You don't have arid if you put on the state modifier. It will almost be the same as these. Plus you have a mission development anyway. So if you're gonna dev institutions, this is probably the one I do for Renaissance. This one, if you own it, because it starts the game owned by um, Adal, do this for um, colonialism, this for the printing press or your capital for the printing press. Also remember by having your capital here, the more land you get, uh, the development is cheaper based off your developments that you own in total. So it's actually not a bad promise to develop. If I were to develop further, um, I'd have some issues. <laughs> I'd probably shift to up here, upper Nubia, where again, you've got drylands that are arid. That's really what you're looking for. There's not a lot of great dev provinces for Ethiopia. Some of the worst ones you can do are out here where it's arid, yet is a marsh or is a mountain. Try to avoid them if you can. Anyway, that's deving. Um, what else did I say I was talking about? Uh, in terms of policies, if you take defensive and religious here, you can get Edict of Resistance for another attrition to enemies. So most enemies who invade my lands have like Point, uh, I have five attrition almost in any of my provinces. It's quite useful in the long run. Um, I'll just go over religiously converting again, just because some people still wouldn't get it from my explanation. So what you need to do is take your missionary maintenance, put it to zero, then put your missionary in a country. So what that does, is because you have no missionary strength, you'll never convert the province even though it might spike a little bit at first. And then you'll get religious rebels. Once they pop up, every province they occupy that's not of their faith, they will flip to their faith. Once you get over 50% of your countries converted, you'll get an option to um, accept their demands. Um, <clears throat> and basically, it'll allow you to flip your religion to their faith. It's impossible for me to do here this is not 50% of my land. I wish it was. My option would be release subjects to get down there, but I'm not going to do it. Okay, let's talk trade briefly. So in terms of trade, Ethiopia is probably, in my opinion, one of the worst trade nodes in the game. Um, a lot of the African trade nodes are bad. You start out with just the Ethiopian trade node. You want to get over here and get the Gulf of the Den going. You can make a lot of money from it. Um, there are plenty of centers of trade. This one was given to me because of the mission to take the province in development. But overall, I control most of the centers of trade on this side. And I'm obviously expanding into Arabia, where I'd get more right through here. If I do all this. I'll control this trade node. Most trade going west comes up through here. Some will go this way. Um, but you want to steer trade to here. And then... If you control Alexandria, you could theoretically steer it up here. I wouldn't recommend it, 
once you get up here, you start dealing with Venice and everyone else pulling trade away from you. So this is where you want to make trade, get these developed. If you can to level three, remember to put in trade depots, trade exchanges, etc. And as Ethiopia, you should have no issue building manufacturers because of your wealth. Build them everywhere you can, basically. Uh, also steer trade from Ethiopia to the Gulf of Aden. Um, otherwise, it tends to go north, I found, to Alexandria, which is kind of a pain. Um, let's see. Okay, so there's a couple interesting events as Ethiopia. I'm not going to go into all of them. But the most annoying one is the Oromo migration here, where they move into your lands, convert it to fetishes, make it really hard to counteract them. Don't worry too much about them. Just wait till the modifier is over, then convert it back. There's nothing you can really do to stop it. It's a pain. Um, it's probably one of my least favorite events in the game. It's historical. It's just the way it goes. Um, over here, I can briefly show you the Kawa peacekeepers and the kawa conquerors so if you take the peacekeepers there you go land maintenance drill rebel suppression good for helping you maintain a large army down here you get the conquerors you can't have both by the way discipline 0.5 recover army morale more expensive reinforce which if you have kawa already makes 50 percent more expensive can really hurt down here is a unique uh privilege for this area raiding taking a hostile fort gets you some manpower uh, it's nice because you struggle with it. I don't think I would actually have taken it. I did in my game. The problem is the influence, no loyalty. Um, I, You can grant some monopolies if you want. Remember to give supremacy over the crown. It's probably the best of all the privileges you can give. There is no equivalent to the Bible studies here for the Jewish ones. But you can do this religious culture if you want, which is kind of cool. Uh, it allows you to expand your culture more. There's no point in taking religious di diplomats almost ever as these guys. Unless you go um, Sunni, it won't help you. So don't worry about it. It's important to note that if you go Jewish and you control Jerusalem, you can build the third temple. However, because Ethiopia and Aksum themselves are endgame tags, you cannot form Israel. Uh, I thought I could when I started my Ethiopia Jewish series, but you can't. So just be aware of that. If you want to form Israel, you either have to start as Semenin over here, where you, which is where the revolt starts. Basically, release them, switch countries to them, and expand from there. Just don't form Ethiopia. Or you have to do as another country and convert to Jewish. Um, eh, it's tricky. There is an achievement for... Jewish, convert all of Egypt to Jewish while having the Jewish community aspect active. Shemot is not. It's easiest to do as Ethiopia. You can do it as other countries. Um, there was one other thing I was going to talk about. Let's see. Well, it's not so much something to talk about, but a little bit um, just in terms of theory stuff. It's now possible to expand through the Darfur region into West Africa without actually needing to take any of the like colonizing ideas. Um, the only reason you'd ever want to take a idea that gives you a colonist is Ethiopia. So you'd want to take expansion here to just colonize basically this one province. Really no other reason to take it. You're, there's enough land in Africa, you're going to spend most of the game conquering Africa and fighting the Ottomans. You don't need to go mess around in Asia. You can if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it. Um... You want to expand all the way down here, get the gold mine provinces in the Zimbabwe area. There's some interesting great projects down here if you want to do it. Um, specifically this one, the city here, if you upgrade it, 5% tech is pretty nice. Um, conquering Madagascar is kind of easy too. And then obviously I was setting up for front future invasions here, so expansion here. The reason I expanded to here is fighting the Mamluks and then fighting the Ottomans is very hard. It's Let's put it this way. The Ethiopian region here, you control all of this, you still won't be able to fight the Mamluks. They're just too strong. You, there's no way you'll fight the Ottomans either. Um, you need more development 
to get a larger um, force limit. So you got to expand down here to get the dev or expand this way to get the dev. Wouldn't expand into Arabia that much because then you run across if the Timurids survive, but also the Ottomans and Mamluks tend to conquer this area. In terms of fighting them, you'll see I in fact took quantity in this game rather than um, offensive, which I took after that. So defensive, religious, quantity, offensive. Little misleading here because I have three um, military ones. I actually took an admin one here. This is the replacement. I believe that's the replacement for expansion ideas, which I had at one point. Um, just to do this one colony here, basically. Um, trade ideas in the long run will pay off controlling this trade node. Don't take it too early, though, because you do have to control a lot of land here first and then development. And later on, admin ideas for the core creation cost is just is it's needed. Cairo otherwise is like 400 admin power. It hurts. But taking it too early, you don't want to take it too early because you want the military ideas to actually be able to fight people. You'll see this is a major problem. 504 soldiers versus 228. I've won a couple wars against the Ottomans. I've mainly won the wars when the Ottomans have messed with Russia or Austria-Hungary. Or the commonwealth strike when they're fighting other people the easiest time to invade the mamelukes is when they're fighting the ottomans just make sure if you can you take these two provinces the suez ones or gaza and the suez to prevent the ottomans from getting easy access and taking this land you do not want to feed the ottomans egypt if you do trying to dislodge them might be completely impossible in terms of forts this one right here in Karga, I found to be probably one of the best forts in the game. It borders quite a few provinces. I was able to hide my troops here in Aswan. They would move in here, start to siege it, and then I could counterattack. Very powerful. Um, that's where I found it to be very useful. Don't forget to build some forts as Ethiopia. It's quite easy to forget to build forts because you're capable of fighting everyone in the area, but building the forts will help you against the Mamluks and Ottomans because the odds of them beating your armies in the field initially is pretty good. And so as Ethiopia, you have to defend in depth. So the forts, defensive ideas, plan it out, counterattack, strike when weak. Not an easy nation to play if you want to try and get... Um, like Prester John and control all the way up to here is Coptic Ethiopia. Well, I think that's about it for this guide. It's gone way longer than I expected. Um, but because people have requested it on my series, here is how I expanded is Jewish Ethiopia. Thanks for watching, by the way, and I'll see you guys all in another guide.